Hi Aquarius, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology. Well, in August 2023, it's all about your partnerships and your partner's money and also a full moon in your sign at the very start of the month. So let's start with the full moon and then we'll get into everything that's happening over here. The full moon in your sign is on the first at nine degrees of Aquarius. So if that is the degree of your rising or of your sun, you are going to be feeling this full moon particularly intensely. But for all Aquarians, of course, with the full moon in your sign, you are going to feel this more than everyone else. And full moons always increase our emotions. Um, in our sign, it makes us particularly likely to filter everything through a very subjective emotional lens. So um, everything is, how do I feel about this? And your take on things are going to be subjective as well. I always say, give yourself a few days before and after to let the energy die down because we can react over emotionally. Um, there's also a desire to, um, for more nurturing, for more caring, either being that way with others. Um, the moon relates to cancer. So, you know, that mother energy, <laughs> that mothering or smothering sometimes, but, or we want to, um, or we just need more nurturing and caring ourselves. So, of course, a full moon is a sun-moon opposition, so all about you, your individuality, your personality, of course, the sun across in your seventh house of committed partnerships. This is often, you know, the back and forth, the finding balance with the opposition, uh, having to do with, you know, who I am and how does that express within a committed partnership. You know, am I still me within the relationship? Um, is it is it too stifling or how, or maybe this partnership is, you know, really contributing to me evolving and, and progressing. It is not a long opposition. The moon moves very, very quickly, but it is echoing the nodes of the moon that switched into the Aries and Libra axis on the 18th of July. So for all of us, and I do have a video on that, you know, there's an overarching energy for the next year and a half about, in fact, self and partnerships, because in the natural chart, of course, Aries is the first house and Libra is the seventh. So sort of an echoing of what's going on with the nodes there. Now, of course, the sun in your seventh house of committed partnerships since the 22nd of July and Venus stationed retrograde on the 22nd of July. Venus will go direct on the 3rd of September but we'll be in post retrograde shadow until the 7th of October. So Venus spends all this time in Leo on the 8th of October, the day after she comes out of post retrograde shadow, she will move into your eighth house. So an unusually long time for Venus to be in one sign only happens about every 18 months when Venus goes retrograde and sometimes planets retrograde back into the previous sign, but Venus will be here all of August and all of September. Now, Venus relates to love and romance. Venus also relates to money, to beauty. So um, I have a whole video on Venus retrograde. I spoke briefly about um, Venus retrograde warnings or things to pay attention to for all of us. So, you know, no um, mega, you know, cosmetic makeovers or investing, uh, you know, and completely changing up your appearance because with the retrograde energy, things aren't necessarily going to turn out the way we thought, or we won't be as happy. Um, with a, the planet's energy going on a loop, there's an idea of, you know, things going backwards or, um, you know, changing our minds or things getting changed up. But if you do watch my Venus retrograde video, I go into much more detail there. In your seventh house of committed partnerships, Venus makes you particularly charming and diplomatic. Again, Venus is related to love. So this can take a partnership much deeper, bring it to a much more committed level. It's wonderful energy to have in our seventh house. Venus in Leo can be a bit um, of a diva, take things quite um, personally and uh, quite in relation to self. Venus tends to be takes others into account. That's why we say Venus, you know, is diplomatic. People want to enter into relationship with us uh, wherever Venus is in our chart, unlike Mars, who's quite an individualist. But in Leo, it takes on a particularly individualistic aspect. There's no good or bad guys, remember, right? But um, then with the retrograde energy added to this, 
you know, whatever does come up can backtrack, can change up again until the first week of October when Venus is out of post retrograde shadow. So, you know, if your partnership does move to the committed level, if perhaps uh, you enter into a more uh, contractual partnership with a business partner, because this is also business partners, this is also rivals on the competition. It is also exes as well. So an ex could come back. That's the classic Venus retrograde you hear, you know, an ex comes back into the picture. Regardless of what it is, just know nothing is completely set until Venus leaves that post-retrograde shadow again at the start of October. And of course, the sun there since the 22nd of July until the 23rd of August is just adding focus and intensity to this. Now, right next door, this is money you come to through others. So a partner's money, again, business partner, a romantic partner, it's any other money you come to or uh, wealth you benefit from through someone else. So this can be a mortgage. This can be, you know, someone investing in your business. Um, it is also inheritances. And by the same token, it is also debt as well. Mars has been there since the 10th of July and will be there until the 27th of August. Mars spends about six weeks in each sign. Mars will not retrograde in 2023. Mars's retrograde was in 2022. Of course, the next one will be next year. So Mars is full steam ahead. Always good to know where Mars is in our chart. And this is dynamic energy, you know, maybe going after um, a loan. Maybe you really want a mortgage. Maybe you uh, want money for a project you have. Maybe you are, um, you're having ideas or you're putting a lot of focus and energy on reducing your debt or helping a partner increase their wealth as well. Mercury is there too, and Mercury is going to station retrograde on the 23rd. Now, like Venus, Mercury will spend the whole retrograde period in Virgo in your eighth house. And I'll give you the Mercury retrograde dates. So retrograde from the 23rd of August to the 15th of September, but already in shadow. Remember, I said always take into account the shadow period in shadow from August 4th and post retrograde shadow until September 30th. Now, Mercury, among other things, does rule commerce. So if this is some form of contractual agreement, maybe, you know, you're taking out a loan, maybe you're um, entering into relationship with a business partner, you know, there's someone you're really going to work with one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Do remember that with Mercury retrograde, things can change up. A detail will change. You know, something will fall through. Things just won't uh, go forward as planned really, really check the details, check the fine print. I find Mercury wreaks havoc not only with communications, that's why things get changed up or things go backwards, right? The communication wasn't clear. Someone didn't understand something as we thought they would or we didn't understand what they meant. And then of course, things get changed up. They have to be redone, reviewed, replanned, revised, all the rewords with retrograde. And as I said, Mercury wreaks havoc, I find, especially with numbers. Mercury is the trickster of the zodiac. So if this is, um, you know, money changing hands or money being transferred, you know, e-transfer from one account to another, just really, really check that everything is right and things aren't going to the wrong place. In general, also Mercury retrograde warnings. Remember, Mercury also relates to ground transportation and, as I said, to communication. So it's not a great time to buy ground transportation you know, buying a car, buying a motorbike, uh, it's not a great time to buy a laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, uh, or anything in that area, you know, even like those um, wrist-worn devices. And, you know, just make sure, as I said, you double-check, triple-check everything if you can't wait until uh, the end of September and that, you know, there's a warranty or you can bring things back. Always, always a good idea to safeguard with Mercury Retrograde and keep an eye on your cell phone. I lost a cell phone during a Mercury retrograde. I didn't lose it. I actually forgot it somewhere really far away on a weekend and was without my phone for a solid week until um, someone went back and or someone was going back there for a weekend and got my phone and brought it back. So often not super disastrous with Mercury retrograde, but just really annoying and takes a lot of energy to undo again. Now, before I talk about when the sun moves into your eighth house, oh, and just briefly, you know, the eighth house as the house related to Scorpio, 
ruled by Mars also. Um, there's something secretive also about the eighth house. Um, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. You know, Mars relates to little astrology lesson here, Aquarius. Mars relates to, um, as the god of war, um, you know, the military, paramilitary, uh, you know, police, first responders. Also, surgeons, as um, there's an energy of Mars as the ruler of Scorpio of probing below the surface. And the eighth house also has to do with what is secretive or the occult. Um, it is money, you know, through wills and legacies and, um, you know, estate of the deceased. So this could also be uncovering a secret. You know, the retrograde could bring something back, uh, some information that would come back to the surface or the, you know, your attention is going to be called to because Mercury is going to obviously with the retrograde pass three times over uh, that area of our chart. And of course, Mars there is really, really driven. You know, perhaps Mars is um, uh, have has you driven in uncovering something. And, you know, is it related to um, money you can come to? Possibly, not necessarily, but that is another just no manifestation of the eighth house. I'm sort of drilling down into the details here, but you have a lot of energy going on. And just before I move on, I wanted to mention that Mars is also going to make an aspect to Uranus in your fourth house. Uranus is your modern ruler. So that is going to be from the 12th to the 22nd. If you hear my pages, that is just me with all my notes. I always take lots and lots of notes to remember, to not forget um, to tell you any of the information. So from the 12th to the 22nd, trine between Mars and Uranus, uh, between two Earth signs. So fourth house of home and family, the physical place we live. Uranus is disruptive energy. Uranus is the rebel. That's why he's your modern ruler. Uranus doesn't really worry about is it uh, good or bad. He's quite not neutral in the sense he just disrupts. So things pop up out of the blue. Um, sometimes it's sudden insight. Sometimes it's related to technology. So could these tie in? You know, are you looking for a source of income to change something up at home? This can also be a move of some sort. Just know that things can sometimes seem uh, disastrous, but you know, the goal with Uranus is obviously to have us evolve and to have us move up one step. Now, while this is happening in the middle of that, the sun is going to square Uranus and that's going to be from the 13th to the 19th. So of course, seventh house, fourth house opposition. Now this is tying in our committed partnerships and whatever is going on in home and family. So, you know, that's a lot of energy during that period. And I often get asked, you know, well, should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? Um, you know, how, how is that going to show up? It depends also a lot on the individual chart, which obviously I can't see for everyone. You know, do you know this is the energy. Um, will it necessarily show up exactly in these areas? You know, where the focus be more perhaps on something being triggered with wealth and income and affecting a partnership or wealth and income and affecting, you know, where you live. It depends a lot. Of course, we all have free will what's going on in each one of our lives. And it depends also, as I said, on our natal placements and um, other aspects going on in our chart. But definitely Uranus, I find, gets triggered by aspects to other planets. So the sun is just going to rev this up. A square is more an energy of chafing. And, you know, the sun is pure energy. So definitely something unexpected can come up. And as I said, it can be sudden insight. It can just be a disruptive event from you, emanating from you. You know, maybe you're going to be uh, feeling particularly rebellious and want to break free from like structure or a tradition. You know, the, the fourth house is also associated with the father. There's an idea of paternal tradition. So maybe you want to really break free from something. Or perhaps this is just a disruptive event that is going to come upon you. And as I said, just remember, it's always with the goal of helping us, you know, evolve and move up to the next level. Now, the sun on the 23rd is going to move in to your eighth house. Just, you know, adding to this conversation, as I said, it's all about partnerships and other people's money this month. The same day Mercury stations retrograde. So that's another pretty intense day just at the very end of this whole, uh, you know, Mars, Uranus, Sun aspects going on. Of course, planet stationing retrograde is stopping its direct motion and getting ready to retrograde. And the Sun changing signs, whenever a planet changes signs, there is increased intensity. So 
that idea of, uh, you know, focus, uh, Mars will still be there for a few days too. Major, major focus here as well, as I said, in your eighth house. Finally, at the end of the month, there's going to be another full moon. So a blue moon in Pisces in your second house of wealth and income. So it's really a money month for you, Aquarius. That's on the 30th. By then, Mars will have moved into your ninth house. And again, opposition between your wealth and income, your wealth and income, sorry, second house and eighth house um, money you come to through others. So, you know, again, the full moon highlighting something, um, bringing something into focus, a question of finding balance. You know, maybe you're going to discuss uh, how much money you put into something, how much money a partner puts into something. Maybe an increase here is affecting your income. Uh, again, you know, there's an idea of back and forth here. And of course, this, you know, just, just as Mercury is coming out of post retrograde shadow. So whatever comes up, you know, always again, that full moon morning, give yourself a few days before and after, and just do note Mercury is on his last day of the post retrograde shadow. So, you know, if you have to commit to something, wait until, you know, the next day or a few days after. And just briefly before I go, Aquarius, we'll talk about this more in September, but Mars in your ninth house, this is all higher education, uh, long distance travel. I call this the house of mind expansion. It's all about learning, about broadening our horizons, about, um, you know, our perspective on, you know, life or our place in the world. There's something very metaphysical about the ninth house. So whatever is different to us and helps us get a um, better understanding, you know, that it's, it's the big question. So whatever we learn in the ninth house has a, a metaphysical aspect to it, or, you know, a philosophical aspect. You can find yourself very uh, driven to read more or learn more about other people's takes on life, or, you know, um, what they think is important in life, you know, what's important, what's not important, what should we be striving for, you know, how do we what's our place in life? You know, what's our, what's our ultimate goal in life? It's, it's those really, really big questions. It can also be long distance travel. It can be going away for a, a far away place, going away for a very long time. As I said, higher education, both as a student or as a teacher as well. It has everything to do with the law. So courtrooms, lawyers, judges, you know, if you are involved in some uh, legal matter as well, but we will talk about that a little bit more in September. So lovely Aquarius, that is everything I wanted to tell you. Thank you so much again for joining me for the astrology. I'm really, really glad to have you guys here. Don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe to the channel, share this with someone you think might find it interesting and drop me a comment because I do read all your comments. Have a wonderful month of August Aquarius and I will see you in the next video. Bye.